Uh, good evening, everyone. If you have listened into the, the recent presidential debate uh, when Dr. Jill Stein went on talking about vaccination, whether she's pro-vaccination or not, uh, you know, she confused the whole nation. And that's the story of most of the parents. Uh, Vimun kind of is, tries to solve that problem. So if, if you go out, um, look on app stores and, and uh, Android Play Store, um, this is the world's best immunization management app out there. It's live in two countries, United States and India, and we are rolling forward and onboarding multiple countries. Um, when we designed the app, one of the things that uh, stood out was most of the medical apps were too medical in nature, so we tried to add a fun element to it, um, and uh, we paid deep focus into the user experience part of it. So let's, let's go ahead and see what, the, what is the problem that Vimeo solves. So these are all real life user stories. Um, <coughs> so let me walk you through a few of them. But as a whole, you can think of Vimeo as uh, the Dropbox for immunization needs. Um, and there's a lot of services built on top of it. So the first one is a busy doctor who lost track of um, immunization tracking for his children. And as a result of it, he ended up giving the same vaccine shot twice just to make sure he hasn't missed out on it. The second one is a single mom. She is a, a dental assistant. Um, she's, she, by the way, works at my dentist's office. Um, for her to go out, make phone calls to pediatricians, collect her son's immunization records, fax it over or send it over to the school daycare, and it's loss of time and money for her. So when I told her about this app, she was my you know, first product evangelist. Uh, the third story is that of mine. A few months back, I, got a, I was walking in my courtyard, and I got a rusted nail after some construction work. It went through my foot. It was 8 PM. Next morning, I was supposed to fly out to Portland. Um, guess what I'm going to do? I don't have access to my pediatrician. Um, I don't know if, when did I take my immunization, uh, my tetanus shots. Um, I called up my, my sister-in-law, sister who is a doctor, and uh, 45 minutes of uh, medicine net um, and uh, WebMD search, and I figured out, and looking through my records, I figured out I took my tetanus shots six, months, uh, six years back, and the booster shot is supposed to be taken every 10 years, but in, a, in an incidence like this, you got to go out and uh, take a booster. Um, so then I started making phone calls to the care down networks um, of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I got prices from, ranging from $145 to $75, all in, you know. So that was 45 minutes, and uh, now I've solved that problem within the app using hyperlocal services. Um, let me move ahead, but um, the last one is in Canada, Ontario, the go state government spent $650 million to build a system called Panorama, and they failed. They went for funding for an additional $300 million, denied. They were trying to put the power in the hands of parents uh, so that they can self-report, but you know the system is just broken. In terms of traction, um, the app is out there. You can go and download right now. Uh, we have not engaged in inorganic growth right now, uh, but we have been hitting 40 to 50% um, growth rate downloads week over week. On Twitter, our Twitter handle is followed by um, John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, uh, World Health Organization, Namibia, and one of the uh, members of parliament from the EU Health. Um, EU Health Part, European Union Health Parliament. We are also part of the IBM Global Entrepreneur Program, and we are working with IBM Watson. Um, this week, we will be screened at the Big Design Conference on Friday um, as part of the Expose UX. So, you know, if you're attending the Big Design event, you'll find our startup on the screen. Uh, we are talking to different investors right now and trying to raise Series A. From a marketing growth perspective, um, we have done all the traditional stuff. We'll get more into that into the Q&A session. So let me just move forward. From a revenue perspective, the app is free. We wanted to solve parents' problem. So it's a freemium-based model. Um, if you want to send your immunization summary to your parents, uh, to your daycare. 
Ooh, lots of questions. I have one question that I'm hopefully I'm hoping will spark many others. You're talking about medical data. How are you keeping that safe? What are you doing to work with the integrations between the people that need it and the people that have it? And uh, yeah, that data. So we, I was, uh, one of the, I was one of the early members who pitched at Health Wildcatters uh, when the program started. Um, I pitched in, in downtown, uh, you know, wasn't selected. Uh, didn't break my heart, I went on. <laughs> But Good job. <laughs> Keep going. Go, 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 go. <laughs> so, so two years later, I'm out here with a finished product. It's, it's out there. And the reason it took us two years is we recognized that as a problem. And we invested in, um, in technology infrastructure. It's HIPAA compliant. Uh, no data is stored anywhere in your app. You can lose your phone. It will be rest, uh, residing in, in Amazon servers. Um, there's data access controls. I've got a... Um, you know, uh, the agreement signed with Amazon, um, so uh, the BA agreement. Mm -hmm. So we have taken care of all that. And what's, what's your go-to-market in terms of getting people to understand what this is and, and why they need it? And Deborah wants to know if you have any integrations. <laughs> uh, the, so so one, of the, one of the things that... I, I, I did a lot of research on the Commonwealth Alliance, um, the, the practice fusions of the world, they all have APIs, they're all trying to dominate the market. Uh, you know, Athena helped launch their program in, in Austin. But interoperability, I've been in the technology industry for 17 plus years. Um, I've, um, so techno interoperability as a problem, it's not going to be solved um, in, the, in the next few years. They're trying, the Commonwealth Alliance has been built, but if I started investing in integrations with every system, I would go down the path of Panorama, six fifty million dollars, and you know the end goal was. So, we we did um, we did a lot of research on how apps are downloaded. Sixty five percent of the downloads happen through app store optimization. So we did that. And we have seen fantastic numbers as a result of that. Um, when we applied ASO in Android Store about a month back, we got a 300% download jump. Um, search engine optimization, road shows, that's why I'm here. <laughs> okay, I have a question. Hello? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so my question has to do with um, working with government entities like the CDC and also like with Medicare, Medicaid, you know, those kinds of institutions. So for example, each state probably has their own uh, immunization requirements. So if you move around from state to state, how does that affect, you know, the record keeping and, and what's required? And then also with other worldwide or, you know, more federal government type level organizations like CDC or Medicare, um, you know, how, do you, how are you integrating with them and how are you working with them there? So great question. Um, it, it, from an, if you look at it this from an outside, it looks like a very simple another mobile health app, but what you're looking at is an immunization management platform. Um, so the way we built it, um, we are complying to the local guidance, the, na na the national guidance. For example, in the United States, we follow CDC guidelines. In India, it's the Indian Academy of Pediatricians uh, if you go to European Union, it's the EU CDC. In Canada, it's the Canadian CDC. So the, the way it's built, um, the UI that you're looking at over here, that changes based on the guidelines you know, that's specific to the country. For example, um, HPV was in, um, vaccine was introduced for males 14 to 15 years of age this year. So that's part of the guideline in the app if you download it right now. Oh, thank you. Additional questions? Nope. Um, so I have a question. I was speaking to uh, Fiona's uh, question. Recently, Fred Wilson had a, uh, a blog post on this exact problem. Uh, if you go look through the top 100 uh, Google app or uh, iPhone, iOS apps, if it's not a game, it's not getting found, um, which leads me to how are you going to get found? 
and this seems more of an enterprise play versus a consumer play, and I'm, I'm really confused. I'm just a guy with a business degree from a third-rate college, so you got to help me out, brother. Sure. Um, it's, it's, a, it's the, like I said, it's the, it's the consumer play. It's, it's the Dropbox. 